live? <laughs> I'm not looking at the screen. So, nobody's watching right now, I'm sure. Um, and that was weird. Usually I can see when it goes live. Um, so we're just gonna wait for some people to roll in. If you're re-watching this, um, just so you don't think I'm crazier than I am, this is live right now. Um, but I can't see your comments right now for the sake of like keeping my magpie brain focused. <laughs> um, and you'll see a pinned comment on the top that says that. Um, and when a bit more people roll in, we'll jump right into how to make it. 130 people. Okay, there's already a ton of people here. So today we're gonna learn how to make a bomb and or a salve. Um, so I wanna talk a little bit about the difference between a bomb and a salve. And then we'll, I, I've got a cheat board back here. Again, magpie brain to keep myself on track and not miss anything. So if you see me looking back there, that's what I'm doing. So the first thing it says on the board that I need to talk about is the difference between a salve and a bomb or a bomb and a salve. Um, I see a, um, a lot of it, a lot of this wording used like kind of just all over the place. And I never know if people really know if they're calling it a salve because that sounds good or it's an actually, oh my gosh, I took them apart. Okay, now watch. <laughs> I took the lids off without looking. Okay, that one's a salve. That one's a bomb, I can tell. Now, they look pretty similar, right? But this one is actually a little bit thicker and this one's thinner. Now, um, when it comes to the difference, the main difference is, is how much wax is in it. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad you guys let me be a human. The amount of wax is the main difference and the only difference between a bomb and a salve, but how they act is completely different. So a balm, because it has more wax, will stay on the top of your skin longer, right? So if you had something that was going on with your skin, like um, eczema or like a rash because you bumped into poison ivy or oak or something like that, you want this to stay on top. Or like if you're battling a fungus, you want it um, to stay on top and so you need more wax in it. Now a salve, and I swear to God, these are different texturally. I'll show you in a second. Now, a salve has less wax in it, which means that it's going to soak into your skin pretty quickly. And you really want that for when you're dealing with something like pain or like um, maybe like even like a deeper like psoriasis, uh, something that's wet, something that you want it to go down way deeper. So again, a salve you choose to make when you're... Is something wrong? No, you're fine. Okay. I, my other half is here helping me do camera stuff right now. <laughs> um, a salve is what you're going to choose to make when you want it to soak in deeply. And a balm is something you're going to make when you want it to sit on top of your skin. So look at this. That's a salve. It's a lot, um, it's a lot creamier. It's a lot softer, right? These are a little harder to ship in the summertime, right? Or, you know, because they'll melt a lot easier, but it goes in a little more quickly and people will say that they're like greasier but really it's the same amount of oil but what they're experiencing is less wax but it also arguably soaks in faster now this is a balm and you can see how that's harder for me to scrape right and it's a lot thicker it's not pasty see how it like sticks i'm just gonna throw that shit over there <laughs> uh, and see how let's compare them so this is a salve and this is a balm See how the salve, it separates and it comes apart almost like you're working with some sort of food, right? And the balm, it wants to stay into, you know, one little clump, right? Well, if I really get to working on it. But, um, and you can see how this one's shinier than this one, maybe? I don't know if the light shows. Uh, but really, it's a really big difference. Like this one's already worked into my fingers and this one's still on the surface. Um, and so that is the main difference between a balm and a salve. And don't worry, I'll tell you the ratios of, of how to do that. Um, okay, so it says uh, talk about what you can add and why. <laughs> um, so really, um, these are just plain. Like all you're seeing in here is just avocado oil um, and beeswax. But you can get creative. You can add things like um, like cayenne powder for pain. You can add clay or charcoal if you want to dry something out or, or hold moisture in or pull something out like a drawing salve. Um, you can add, um, let's see, you can add things like birch tar or pine tar 
or I forgot to grab it out of the fridge, um, some hemp oil, it doesn't, I don't need it, it's okay. Um, you can add anything that is oil soluble or powder form. So, oil soluble. I want you to hear that word soluble. I see so many people try to add things that are not oil soluble, but also like not oil compatible. They want to add tinctures or they want to add honey or they want to add glycerin. They want to add these things that are water, that are water based, right? Um, and what happens when you add water to oil? It separates, right? Like, like that's science. Like water cannot combine with oil unless you have an emulsification process going on. And we're not doing any emulsifying when we're making um, a basic salve or bomb. But you can add things like, so technically cayenne or charcoal or clay, these things aren't water soluble, but their particles are oil soluble. They're not water soluble either, <laughs> but they'll, um, they'll disperse, right? And then as your salve, oh my gosh, my hands are all slippery from putting it on. <laughs> okay, so as your salve or your balm cools, basically all of your powders will disperse into it. So when you take it out and you put it on, it has it on there. But if you try to add like a tincture or something that's water-based um, or has water in it or has a water-like texture that isn't an oil, basically, what happens is it'll separate. And then you can have your salve or your balm go rancid on you and start developing mold because water plus oil equals a bacterial explosion. That's why if you're making body butters or something at home that has an emulsification process in it, you absolutely have to use um, a preservative. But I won't, um, I won't sidetrack too bad on that. But that doesn't, you know, really shut you down because theoretically you will have made um, an herbal infused oil. And if you haven't learned how to do that yet, um, go check my saved other live class. I talk all about how to make um, herbal oil infusions. It's like a two hour long jabber session. <laughs> so there's a lot of information there. And then you would take that oil that's already got all of your herbal properties into it and you make it into a bomb and then you can add extra things for pain or, you know, drawing out acne, all kinds of stuff. Um, I like to get creative. Um, and use different tars or like pitch and things like that because these are oils, they're oil soluble. They're really good for things like, you know, like acne or wound healing and things like that. Um, but then the next thing we'll talk about addition wise, cause that was kind of just like, you, oh, you could even do like powdered honey, all that. You can't do real honey. Well, it's not fake honey. You can't do um, wet honey. <laughs> it has to be powdered honey. Um, but you can do things, um, my husband is there on there and it's totally, I'm like, I don't know what he's doing. And it's, it's not letting me pin the comment there. Now I pinned it. Oh, okay. We pinned the comment. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I'm not used to people being behind. It's, it's really weird. I was talking about it and let me just be a human here for a second. I was like, I don't know why I get nervous when I go live for classes because I go live for like shop stuff all the time. Right. And or I don't know why it's weird psychologically for me that he's here while I'm live when he's the one that records like 95% of the videos I make. <laughs> you know, it's something in my head. I'm like, oh, he's watching, but he watches when I do the videos anyway. So it's, it's a weird thing in my mind. But okay, back to what I was saying. You can add powdered honey, um, which is honey that's, you know, been dried and then powdered, but you can't add fresh honey. But we'll also talk about things that we can add besides beeswax. Um, let me grab this right quick. So here's your beeswax. I know a lot of you are probably gonna have questions about using vegan wax options. Um, and I don't work with any of that stuff. So I am not the person to answer those questions. I only um, work with beeswax, but I would also like kindly challenge you to consider how ethical it is to use um, non beeswax waxes to thick like the artificial ones are made out of plants a lot of them really um, promote like deforestation and they're not sustainable whereas if we support like ethically cared for bees the bees are the ones that are literally the reason that we are able to eat vegetables at all our fruit you know if it wasn't for the bees and by proxy when we support ethical bee tenders um we support those bees so like not using beeswax in turn kind of like doesn't support the bees right um uh, and it doesn't hurt them to take their beeswax it's not how that works they're not like killing these bees to get the beeswax 
bees are very well taken care of. Um, so, okay, anyhow, I really like beeswax and that's what we're going to be thickening with today. Um, I steer towards the yellow beeswax. If you start buying white beeswax, please know that there's no such thing as white beeswax. It's been bleached and like chemically stripped of color. Even if it's labeled organic, it's not great. Um, so stick with the yellow if you can. Um, and then you can add all different types of things like shea butter or mango butter, anything that you like the idea of. Um, do consider seeing if it's sustainable at all, you know, like how is it like being used, like is it like deforesting a bunch of stuff like that. Um, and then you can even add things like tallow. Um, tallow is the fat from a red meat animal, make sure that you're getting, you know, grass fed, ethically raised, things like that. And that also helps the environment versus um, supporting like big ag and feedlots and stuff like that. And really good tallow is gonna have a yellow color to it. If you find tallow and it's white, that means the animal probably wasn't living on grass at any point in its life. Um, so the main thing that you really do use is the beeswax and oil. I love avocado oil. You can play around with other oils. Um, to hear me talk more about like which oils I prefer and why and ones I stay away from, um, check out my, um, my older class of um, how to make herbal infused oils but i use avocado oil and beeswax so these are the two main things that you generally need to make a salve but then again you can add all these different things and you don't have to add a lot of these different um like butters or fats um, and if you start adding too much what you'll actually want to do is like if you're gonna like add a whole cup of tallow you would want to take like that amount of wax away or at least half of that amount because if not it'll be too too thick and too heavy um okay so talked about all that stuff let's start making a bomb right um i would do a salve but i want to do a bomb for you guys um for some reason or another now what you're gonna need equipment wise geez i guess i should have covered that earlier right <laughs> um it's a good thing i'm not a professional you're gonna need a double boiler. This is my little janky double boiler. I ha I don't really use this anymore, but I've had it for years. You can see it's been well used. Now I use a big, um, they're over there, big five gallon double boilers, but that wasn't practical for making a video. So I dug this little lady out. Um, but if you don't have a double boiler, you don't gotta go out and spend money if you're not, if you're just getting started and you just wanna try. You probably, at least in your house, have a pot and a bowl. You just need a pot and a bowl that fit well into each other and, and basically you've created a double boiler. And because this one is clear, you see how the water is in there? Basically the way a double boiler works is um, you start boiling your water and then that heats up your oils and your waxes versus directly doing it on your stove because what will happen is your oil will start to smoke and burn and get too hot. It's kind of like you know, you need a double boiler if you're making things like chocolate, um, certain sauces, anything where you don't want that direct heavy heat on there. Um, okay, so if you don't have a double boiler, again, a pot that will fit um, a bowl into it. Try and make sure the bowl doesn't touch the bottom though, because the idea is to keep it away from direct heat. Um, so what you're gonna do next is put water in there, right? And I'm not gonna actually use this, but I mean, I already have water in that, so pour some water in there. <laughs> That's pretty self-explanatory. Um, you don't really want, um, you would need more water in there than that, just to put that out there as <laughs> a disclaimer. Um, if you put your, um, there's probably almost a little bit too much water in there, but you see how it just goes up a little bit. If the water is too high in there and this kind of floats around, it'll boil water out where you're going. So, all right. I think I'm doing an all right job. I'm lying to myself. I'm all right. Uh, okay, so now we're going to make a balm. So for a balm or a salve, you need four cups of oil. Um, you can half this recipe, you can triple it, double it. You can, you know, do the math. Uh, hey Kent, I didn't get four cups of oil. I thought I had it pre-measured out. There's three and two thirds in that. Just like this is what it's gonna be like in real life too, where I'm like, oh shit, I didn't do that right. So he's now gonna come over here with a big ass thing of oil. You can just come over here, it's all right. And uh, I'll tell you when, go slow. Cool. 
All right, four cups of oil. <laughs> we go through a lot of organic avocado oil, so we get them in those big 35 pound jugs. <laughs> Thought I measured it out. Okay, so you need four cups of oil. And this is the ratio for um, a bomb or a salve. And then to make a bomb, it's three and a half cups. I have that here of wax, but for salve, it's two cups of wax. So say it with me. If I want to make a salve, it's two cups of wax per four cups of oil. If I want to make a bomb, it's three and a half cups of wax per four cups of oil. So let's do three and a half cups of wax and I'll realize pretty soon here and remember why I outgrew this little pot. <laughs> uh, probably fit better in the other um, hodgepodge together one. All right, I got it in there, right? So now if you want to add, let's say, let's add a little bit of tallow and a little bit of shea butter. This is just plain avocado oil, so I'm just making like a, a mock bomb here. Okay. It's really weird not seeing myself live. I'm just looking at the back of my camera. Usually I'm like looking myself dead in the eye. So you can measure this out, but you also don't have to. I'm just gonna scoop a little bit of tallow in there just to show you what we do when we... I'm gonna put a little bit of shea butter in there. Shea butter is great um, because it has a lot of vitamin K in it, which is really good for like bruising and stuff. And tallow is great because she supports like um, collagen and skin cell development and just all around like if you've not tried tallow for your skin yet just just do I promise you won't be disappointed um okay so now I'm gonna get up wait for my husband to hear me say I'm gonna get up and I'm gonna take this over to here we go over to my stove now your first instinct is gonna be to crank this sucker on high. And I am kind of gonna do that <laughs> for the live because it's gonna take a while for it to get going. But really, if you're at home when you're not making a video where you don't wanna take 45 minutes for your water to heat up, I want you to like keep it on like medium, medium low and let it, I almost put my hand on that burner, and let it um, just slowly heat up. I'm gonna turn it up a little bit and it's probably, it's gonna like boil over on me a little bit because it'll be like a rapid boil. So really when you're making a salve, you're kind of trying to get it up to like a low boil and then just keep it at like a steady simmer. Um, it still won't really ever get hot enough for your um, oil or anything to smoke. It's just more about not making that water like explode out of your double boiler. And when I say explode, I don't mean it's gonna go boom. I mean like water's gonna come, you know, like when you forget the pot in the stove and it starts fucking boiling over. Uh, okay, so I've got that, you know, a little hotter than it should be. And now I'm gonna come back over here and I'm gonna clear some of this stuff off and out of my way. Um, and then we're gonna jabber about tins, and then when that's closer to ready, I'm gonna show you um, I'm gonna show you what it looks like when it starts to melt and how to add some of these other things like, you know, cayenne or powder. This is gonna be a weird salve or bomb, I should say, uh, because, oh, my board is falling. My board is falling. It's slow, it's like slow falling. There we go. Okay, so I showed you how to do that. I started making it, ratios of wax, the salve, the bomb. What am I looking around his head to see what I'm missing here? Let's talk, <laughs> let's talk about, I hope you guys are having fun. Um, I'm just trying to be pretty fun with this myself. Okay, so let's talk about uh, 10 options and pouring while we wait for that to happen. Okay, so you've kind of learned how to make a bomb or a salve. It is really easy. People make it so complicated when it doesn't need to be. And you'll even find places that are like, you need to use X and X amount of percent per oil. My God, just give the cup measurements. <laughs> Cause then it's like intimidating, right? It's way easier to look at like, okay, 
if I'm making a salve, I need two cups of wax per four cups of oil, and I can either half that or expand it. It's easier to work with amounts and just like cutting the math down or up than it is to like try to figure out a percentage because then you have to weigh your oil and you have to weigh all this stuff and then it just becomes like this complicated math problem. Nobody, nobody's got time for that. <laughs> it's intimidating, right? And like my goal is to like take away like the intimidation for people, but also I need to make shit easier on myself. So I just make it easier all around and then I share. Um, okay. So when it comes to pouring this balm when it's ready, you've got your obvious options. Um, this is usually what people are using is these, you know, what's the word? Measuring cups. <laughs> And, and they're okay, and I use them for years, but I've got two here to show you something. See the oil all over the front of that when you watch me pour it in? It's because Pyrex measuring glasses, while they're really awesome for like cooking and can take heat and things like really great, they suck for pouring waxes, and here's why. Look at that. See how rounded that is? And it, like, it's, I touched that all sensually. <laughs> This video just got weird. Um, but really what it is, is it doesn't have a defined tip. So like as I'm pouring, what happens is it wants to, see when you go back up, because it's round, um, it really wants to like just continue rolling off of that. Whereas if you look at this just random one that I have, it has a really sharp tip on it. See the difference? This one's all round and voluptuous. And this one's all skinny and jagged. The skinny and jagged will always pour cleaner, even because it, it, it makes it come down a little bit better. So if you're going to use this, and 90% of you will use some type of measuring cup to um, pour with, try to find one that has a really pronounced jagged tip that it pours out of. And I swear to God, it will make such a big difference of how much balm you spill or salve you spill. You will spill some no matter what when you're working with these um, and just about anything. You should just prepare yourself to spill some. Um, but if I was picking a measuring cup, look for the one that has a defined tip. Or you can use a teapot. I know, that's not, and this is actually like a coffee percolator, but for some reason it, it almost has like a defined tip because it's not rounded and I've used this for years and you know, you just scoop up your balm or pour it in there and it it's meant to pour more than a measuring cup is and I found that they work really well. So maybe you can't like afford to go out and buy like a new measuring cup right now, but maybe you've got an old percolator or something laying around that you don't really use all that much. But again, even if you're going to use this for salve and then you still want to use it for coffee, it's no big deal. Just clean it out. We're not working with anything toxic here. It's avocado oil or whatever oil you're choosing. It will be an edible oil, so it's not going to kill you. Um, and then if you get into making a bunch of balms and salves and you're doing more than like a few cut batches here and there, a lot of you are probably familiar with this, get yourself a confectionery funnel. That's what it's called. Uh, people are like, what is that thing called? A confectionery funnel. What is it called? It's a confectionery funnel. Uh, you can get all different kinds and you know, they're on Amazon. You can buy them for as cheap as like $25 all the way up to like $90. This is like an in-between one. Um, to make sure that you're getting something that's metal, you know, preferably stainless steel. I don't like the plastic ones. Um, and these are just really fantastic. So see when I pull that handle, that thingy in there moves. That's that's the real word thingy. I swear to God, I looked it up. <laughs> um, what happens is is that allows your salve or your balm to come out, and the second that you take your finger off of the trigger, it stops pouring. So you can just fill like that. And it's fantastic because it come, make sure it comes to the stand. You would just pour your salve or your balm in here, and then just start pouring. And they usually come with different size tips. I like the medium size. Um, I'm going to show you how to use this um, in a little bit. Let me take a drink here. Okay. Let me take a peek at what's going on over there. Not a whole lot because I should I should have been I should have been heating that water up before I got started. Right. Like and had like something like ta da! It's already ready. <laughs> But that's okay. I really, really don't script this shit. Can you believe that? That I'm just like being a real human right now. Okay, so let's talk about my bracelets falling off. 
Let's talk about 10 options. You have so many options out there on the internet. This is just a handful of what I happen to grab of what I've used over the years. Um, I, I really like, okay, for sanity reasons, I like the seamless tins. Seamless means it just pulls off, right, and it just pushes right on. If you get the ones that screw on and screw off, there's nothing wrong with those, but <laughs> you see that frustration on my face? If you start getting to the point that you're making like hundreds of bombs or you're making this often and you're like doing it all the time and you open up a little shop and things are going great, you're going to get fucking carpal tunnel. <laughs> That's the only way to put it because you have to like those repetitive motions can really damage your body, you know, and so you're having to screw it off and screw it on. This one I like that I can just pop it off and then when I'm ready, when it's ready to be capped, I can just push it on. I can even just like pretend like there was a bunch there and I can just push it on. I mean, it won't just like fall on magically, but typically I'm dropping and pushing it on. And then this is a love top tin where it does and doesn't screw on. So it goes like that, but it's not, it's just, for some reason it's not quite the same. Um, a lot of you are pretty familiar with these. Um, there's nothing really wrong that you can pour it into unless it's something that's not meant for heat. So you can use like old baby food jars, old cosmetic tins that you have left over. I would probably advise against using like random little plastic containers unless you know that they're like heat safe and make sure that they're not just like heat safe, but like 170, 180 degrees, somewhere at least 200 degrees Fahrenheit because that's about what um, temperature beeswax melt at. Should have had that written down. I swear to God, I know it. I just don't you know, archive it there. <laughs> um, but the main thing I want to talk about is I see people shoot themselves in the foot all the time. Now, it doesn't really matter if you're making it for yourself, but I know a lot of you watching, um, you know, are having the idea to like open up your shop and would like to maybe sell these things at farmer's market and things like that. Um, you overfill these. <laughs> people overfill these. So um, the manufacturers put a line in these for a reason. I don't know if I can really get it to show there. You can kind of, can they see that, the line in it? Um, on the inside, so you see that line up there, typically you're going to want to fill it right to that line. If you start filling above it, you're giving out more than the tin is meant to hold. It doesn't really matter, but I mean, you end up, let's say you fill 10 of these all the way to the top and you can only make 10. If you fill them all the way just to the line and not all the way to the top, you probably would have filled 12, maybe 13, right? So you kind of shoot yourself in the foot that way and then you're, you're giving out more of what you're making um, than you need to. Um, now this is a three ounce, this is a two ounce, and this is a one ounce. You can go all the, oh, look, my water's over boiling. Let me turn it down a touch. Okay, actually, <coughs> why don't I have him grab the camera and we'll stir this a bit. Okay, so here we go. So you can see what I meant by like, I turned it up way too high right here. It's not hurting anything, but that's why it started to boil over because I'm, I'm getting it to boil. Um, but if you look on the top here, this is normal. Don't be freaked out when you're like, oh my Jesus, what is that floating around in there? That's what it looks like when the wax starts to melt. And if I leave it alone long enough, you guys have all seen those like herbal ASMR videos I make where it's like all like, <laughs> where you can go um, watch a bunch of those in my making things on Instagram if that's where you're re-watching this at. Um, you'll see it like be a big like shell of wax and I like slowly and sensually <laughs> push my, um, my, uh, what the fuck is this called? Spatula? Spatula through it? It's weird that they call this a spatula because you also call the thing you flip pancakes with a spatula and my brain doesn't like that. So I'm just gonna give it a mix. It can help it, um, it can help it, um, start to melt down. You can see that's the towel, I mean, that's the shea butter, that's some wax. The tallow's probably already melted because, um, she has a really, really low melting point. Um, but yeah, we're just really waiting for this to get all the way melted, and then um, I'll show you like how to add powders. I mean, it's pretty simple, but there's a few tricks to make it um, not so clumpy for you. So I'm just gonna leave that here. Um, okay, we're gonna go back over here. I decided to enlist my other half as a cameraman because I felt like you guys would get more 
almost said bang for your buck, but you didn't pay anything to watch this. <laughs> you guys would get more out of it if you were watching me do the thing versus me just like holding the phone and doing it. So that's what I'm doing. Um, okay, so. Talked about things to add to it. Showed you things that we used to pour. Really didn't think it through with having that salve ready in time. So let's see, what can I talk about? All right, let's talk about what happens when, <clears throat> look, I made myself a cheat sheet. Too much wax, not enough wax. So not enough wax will happen when you're making salves and too much wax, I mean, in theory could happen when you're making a salve, but then it just turns into a bomb, but it really usually happens when you're making a bomb. So I wanna show you the difference. Um, and this will help you, um, kind of figure out what went wrong, but I'm also gonna maybe give you, not maybe, I'm going to, I'm not gonna like tease you with it. <laughs> I'm gonna give you a tip on um, how to avoid these problems. So, not enough wax. Look how shiny that is, all right? This is what happens when I only added about, oh God, I had it written down, like a cup and a half of wax to four cups. Like I was gonna make a salve, but I didn't put enough, enough wax in it. Are you ready? That is what happens, right? It looks set up. People are like, I made a cream. No, you didn't make a cream. You made, you made a, uh, a salve or a balm even that had too, not enough, almost I said too much wax, not enough uh, wax in it. And it will set up, but it's like really, it's almost like reminds me of like petroleum jelly or something like that, right? So that is not enough. Let me grab. I really fingered that, so <laughs> paper towel. Um, okay, so too much wax. Too much wax. Ready? Mm, mm. Can't get nothing in there, right? There's too much wax, and I can't even, I always use my fingernails to get like wax or bombs and stuff out for myself. Watch, I can't even barely, right? I can't even really take any out. I can't push into it. I mean, you'd really have to like, and that's too much wax. Now that was like four cups of wax instead of the three and a half. It really makes a difference. You wouldn't think that that little bit of extra would really um, would really have that much of an impact, but it really does. But um, both of these are savable. If you do what they call a jelly plate test before you pour anything. So ideally you won't be discovering that it doesn't have enough wax or it has too much wax, before you pour it into um, your thingy-majig here, your tin, there's the word. And it's not ready enough for me to show you, but let me, I'm just gonna grab something, wait right there, he's gonna have to move the camera for me. I'm gonna grab something out of my fridge. So if any of you guys have ever made like jam or jelly or something thickened, um, but there's there's this thing that they call the, the jelly plate test. Um, where you take your jelly or your jam or whatever you're making and you have a cold plate in the fridge and then when you take that hot jam or hot jelly and you put like a little spoonful onto the plate, what happens is the cold makes it set up so you can tell if it's too thin or too thick. You can do the same thing with your salves or your waxes. I like to use, because I have a ton of them, these like cold packs and you can see where I've been using it for a long time. I mainly like them because they clean off easy. I don't have to have a plate in there that I'm gonna like, it's gonna come flying out and break, right? Cause you forget, you open your freezer or your fridge, it's like, gosh. Um, and so these are really fantastic. And I like that um, I can like, let me, let me get some here. I'm gonna, it's not ready yet, but let me get some. Um, okay. I've got a little bit here. I'm gonna put it on there. It's not ready yet, but oh. Um, I like it because once it's cooled, can they see that in the video? Can they see um, it on there? Or, okay, so once it's cooled, I can actually like pop it off of there and like fuck with it with my hands. <laughs> I can use my hands. Um, and I really like that compared to a plate because a plate you kind of have to scrape it off and then it kind of might mess up the texture. So I know that this is definitely, it's not melted, so I just grabbed, I just, look, look, that's what I mean. Look, it's happening. 
<laughs> um, so I can get it right off of there. And like, if that was ready to have the test done, I would know that it was thick enough. I could also be like, whoa, that's way too thick. Cause what you're gonna do is you're basically taking this little bit of salve or, um, or bond that you've put on your cold thing. And you can use a plate if you want to. You don't have to go out and buy one of these. Um, this was, you know, last year was just a year of all things like food being delivered to the house. So we ended up with like a million of these like gel cold packs and I didn't want to throw them away because they're useful. Um, but you're going to take this and you can like test the texture. You can be like, oh my God, that's like so hard that I can't rub it into my skin or it's so soft that it just like never even set up. Then you know that you have to do one of two things. If it's too thin, you need to add more beeswax. If it's too thick and you have it on hand, add some more oil. Even if you don't have any more herbal infused oil, it's okay just to add, you know, one fourth, one half cup and start slow of extra oil and then keep testing it until you get it to the consistency you like. That might sound like it's a complication, but I swear to God, that is so much better than being like, I'm gonna fill up 92 tins. <laughs> And then discover that you're like, oh my God, it's not setting up or it's so hard that like it won't really come out of the tin and I can't like rub it on my body. So it's really just worth taking that time to put a little bit on a plate and figuring out um, if your texture is where you want it to. Um, okay, I'm going to have you come with me again and we're going to stir this up. Oh shit, I need that. <clears throat> okay, see now it's really starting to melt. It starts to make like that wax cap and you can start doing some ASMR here. <laughs> um, and I'm just going to get it really up and going. So I guess I can talk about it um, while I'm stirring this and kind of helping it melt. Um, okay, I'll have him show my face. <sighs> so. One thing that happens to people is you're real excited about making a balm yourself, right? Or you're tired and you just want to get this shit done with, or whatever your existence is. And it gets to be melted all the way, like, right? I can stand here and stir this and get it melted a lot quicker. Um, and then you're like, finally, I don't see any more wax. I don't see any more butters. It's gone to clear, right? It's still not ready. Um, what happens is we we don't see it, so we think it's been fully melted, but like on like a little molecular level or cellular level, not cellular, but like on a, on an invisible level, um, the wax has just melted, but it hasn't fully melted. And so you really want to let this go for like an extra like 10 to 15 minutes after that you've seen all of your waxes melt. And if you're ending up with like grainy waxes or it's like um, making these like really weird like thick dots on the top, although there can be like different reasons for that, but one of the reasons is you're not letting your um, wax melt all the way. So when you end up pouring it and it cools, what happens is the wax naturally rises because it hasn't been um, melted all the way and then it makes those little bumps on the top or you end up with kind of like a gritty balm or a gritty salve. And what you're feeling when you rub that in is actually the unmelted particles um, of waxes and stuff. So you can see how fast, look, um, it's been a second since you looked at it. It's almost, it's, I mean, another two or three minutes and it's, it's ready for me to let it sit. Um, I probably won't let it sit for that extra long period of time because I'm not actually gonna be using this for anything. I'm just showing you how. But that is something that's really important. I don't care if you've never made a salve or if you've been making salve for years and years and years, let it sit at the same temperature. Don't turn it down and then just let it sit, but like keep it at that steady boil or that steady simmer in your double boiler and let it just kind of like marinate, right? And let it really break down and really um, incorporate. So look, it's almost all gone now. That's how fast it happens. So, it would be easy to think that as soon as I get those little bits to, to melt in, um, that it's ready to pour, but it's really, it's really just not. But I'll tell you what it is ready to do. Um, I can start gearing up to show you how to add in, let's say, 
where I want to add in between these patterns. Again, this is going to be a weird one. Um, but let's start with clay. Let's start with clay. Um, because that's a really common one. He's going to plug me back in here. And then in a minute, he'll have to jump back up. Um, clay is a really common thing to add to salvage bombs, especially if you're making a drying bomb. Now, let's talk about the difference between clay and charcoal right quick. Um, well, you know the difference. I mean, they're different, like, things. This one comes from the ground. This one comes from burned stuff. But, um, so charcoal is really, really good um, at drawing things out because basically as it dries, it tightens on your skin, and then it just, like, it'll pull, like, splinters out, ingrown toenails, infections, all kinds of things. Now, clay actually does the same thing as it dries because if anybody here lives somewhere where there's, like, heavy clay soil, you know how, like, like wet and heavier soil is in like spring and, and winter and stuff. But like in the summertime when it dries out, like your soil like cracks and separates, right? Um, and so as clay dries, it also will pull things out of your skin, but clay likes to hold on the moisture, right? That's why it's like, I don't know, we have a lot of clay in our soil here and like going in anywhere like the animals have been extensively where they like to stand around i'm like i've almost lost my entire leg to like the pig pen and it's a big pen they have a lot of room but if i step in the wrong place because of the clay it'll just hold on to me but it's because it holds on to all that moisture and the moisture can't disperse so it's like sloppy and muddy right but these are both good things to use in salves if, we, if we're wanting to dry out infections or ingrown hairs and things like that. And you can combine them. But if you've got like um, really dry psoriasis or eczema or something like that going on, clay is a good option because it can both pull out um, kind of like the impurities and things that are might be irritating your skin and like um, contributing to these. But it's also going to hold in moisture. So typically I like to use um, the um, clay if it's like um, a moist season, I mean, if it's a dry season. So in the summertime, I like to use a lot of clay. In the wintertime, I like to use a lot of charcoal um, because you know, one's moist, one's dry. Sidetrack, kind of. I want to show you how I add them. So let's let's do the clay first because it's not as, this is not as chaotic as the um, charcoal is. So let's go this way. I'm gonna unplug my phone every time we do that. <laughs> um, okay. So, and this is just kaolin clay that I'm going to be using, and you can see it's all the way melted in there. But see, there was still stuff on top. I know some of it came off of my spatula, but um, but yeah, you'd really want this to go longer. But you don't have to wait that extra like 10 to 15 minutes before you add your other stuff. But you do want to wait until all of your waxes and butters and things are melted because it just makes incorporating it a little bit easier. Um, okay, so it would be really tempting to just take this and dump it in there, right? Don't do that, it'll clump on you. So you get yourself um, a little flour sifter or even just like a metal sieve that you can shake back and forth. Anything that's like um, got fine wire mesh on it will do the trick. Um, and I'm just gonna put a little bit of that in there. And so the idea is this won't actually, because it's not oil soluble, this won't actually um, like incorporate into it. But when I slowly add it, what, see, I added that too fast and it wants to clump up on me. Um, so the idea is you just want to add a little bit at a time and be constantly stirring. Because if you add too much, it's gonna turn into lumps and then you might think that you can stir it in but what happens is it kind of like binds with um, with the waxes in there and then you'll get like really like most of it will be on the bottom of your pot and some of it will naturally end up settling there as you're pouring but you really just want to be like pouring pretty consistently uh, I mean stirring it pretty consistently but just make that go in there really nice and slow uh, okay, so now let's do the charcoal just because, oh, 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 clay everywhere. And you know, clay is really cool because like I said, there are so many different kinds. This is just, ooh, shit, I'm smoking some clay, um, or some wax or something. Um, oh, we're all gonna die. Okay. Yep. I got wax on there. Okay. So I'm going to take this back over here. Wait, wait, you can just look there. I'm just going to grab this charcoal. I'm just gonna grab this charcoal. 
gonna go full mess for you guys. Disclaimer. I don't know if you can see me. Um, before you use charcoal, be aware that it will stain your clothing, that it can stain certain types of pots, that it will get everywhere, that if you spill it, <laughs> it's easier to clean it up when it's dry. Resist the urge to get like a wet towel and clean it because it will just turn it back into like wet campfire sludge and it'll just go everywhere, right? Um, so that's also why like if you're using these clays and charcoals and you are gonna use a sifter like this, consider using one that you're not gonna be using for food because it will be hard to get this stuff out of there. Oh shit, charcoal went fast. Well, that looks kind of cool. We'll show them that just because it looks cool. It like turned into like, it did like art. So, but you can see how if I go too fast, it just wants to clump up, right? It It's harder for it to incorporate into there. All right, that's probably enough of that chaos. Um, and again, I'm not making thing, anything in particular here. This is just a pot of, <laughs> of April's just kind of, making a mess here sacrificing some stuff to show you guys what I'm doing and then look at for good measure because I've shown you every other thing I'm gonna grab the um let's make sure that I that I mace myself <laughs> and I'm gonna add some cayenne um now honestly damn I need um hold on I'm gonna fix that burning real quick I'm gonna grab something because it's buggy Probably don't do this at home. There. Get all that excess off of there. I'm just gonna throw a little bit of this cayenne in there because whatever. Now, honestly, when I'm working with cayenne, I prefer to um, infuse it into the oil that I'm making and then by proxy it's in there. But if you forget it or you just wanna play around with making a cayenne salve, um, a little goes a long way. That's my best advice. Don't forget to wash your hands. Cause you know, if you rub yourself in the eye with cayenne, it's gonna, it's gonna be a bad day. Um, and we've done that so many times cause we're down here like working and we've got the balm on our hands, we forget about it and we're like, we're like ah! <laughs> it's a situation. Okay, so this is a really weird thing because I've added charcoal, clay, and cayenne. There's no real world where all of these are gonna go together like that. But I've basically made my bomb. So I'm gonna let that sit and we're gonna prepare over here. Um, let's get cleaned up and uh, show you some more stuff. Okay. I feel like I'm doing an all right job. I mean, I'm maybe not like the most organized here, but I'm all right. I'm all right. Okay. So now <laughs> that is how we clean. That is how we clean. And sometimes when I'm prepping for updates, um, I mean, we're clean when we do updates. So sometimes I'm just like, oh, it should have just in the way. <laughs> just push it out of the way. Let's line some tins up and pour this weird ass balm we made. Uh, okay. Okay. So let me Oh man, sometimes these stick and my hands are slippery because I've been touching all kinds of oil. Got it. One down, like 10 to go. I, I did enough here to show you. I should have had these pre-done. I was like, oh, I'll just casually, I'll just casually open these. You want to know the truth? We found a new um, bulk supplier. Um, for those of you that have been, you know, following me on Instagram, you know I do these big shop updates and we, get, we, we make a lot of bombs and salves. And I found a new like bulk supplier of tins. And it's a godsend because guess what? They give us the tin and the lid separately. <laughs> so every time you've ever bought a bomb from me, I've had to like get the lid off before I'm filling hundreds of them. And it really is gonna make a difference that I can just fill and put the lid on, like for like my hands and my own like mental health. <laughs> um, Cause when you get into like the little, like uh, the half ounce ones, it can suck to get those lids off. Um, and just really, you spend like four to five minutes like uncapping like 400 things. Like you'll like thank Jesus when <laughs> you find a supplier that gives you 
them separately. Okay, so here we go. I've got everything all lined up over here. I'm gonna take a drink. All right, now I'm gonna grab this. Let's see if I don't burn myself because I always forget that this thing doesn't have appropriate handles. Okay. It's a hot pot of hot is what that is. Um, so now, listen, I know a lot of people don't like the notion of paper towels. You can buy recycled paper towels. Pa paper towels used afterwards or like if they're not like super nasty are really good for compost piles. They're also really good for um, like fire starter and they're gonna save your sanity a little bit. I like to take, let me move that out of the way. I like to take, um, if I'm just doing a little, you can use a normal towel if you want to as well, but um, please know if you start um, like rinsing a ton of like oil and wax down your drains, you can have a big problem. And that's why I opt for um, paper towels because um, you can just wipe stuff out, like all the excess like fats and stuff, and that won't go down your drain, right? Um, but also we can pour on it and then if we spill, that's because the um, the hot salt bomb on there. If we spill, there's it's easy cleanup. Um, so now, this is weird for me because usually I'm using like a big five gallon one, and I usually am. Oh shit! That's why I like plastic stuff. <laughs> um, but um, I usually dip this into there and then pour that into there. But I don't have that, so. Let me pretend like I can tactfully pour this. Can they see what I'm doing at all? Can they see me? No, I'm going to pour it into there if you just want to follow me. This isn't going to be smooth. Five dollars says I spill some shit. But maybe not. Oh. Now I pour stuff all the time. I'm good. It's probably more than I needed. Okay. So. Okay, he's going to follow me. He has, you guys have seen me do this a million times before. Ready? This is why I love a confectionery funnel. My lighting right now sucks, so I'm not quite able to see exactly where I'm filling to, but I, muscle memory tells me I'm getting pretty close to just above or just at the line that's in your tin. Remember, if you overfill that, you're filling more than you need to. Of course you can if you want to. Sometimes if I have like barely any left in the confectionery funnel, I'll just go over and fill them all up again. But you can also, look how much control I have with this. I mean, compared to, let me just dump some of this in here. Shit, there was oil in there, that's okay. And then, I'm gonna set those there. I mean, this isn't going to be horrible because I've done it a million times, but, um, so I'm pouring with that. Shit, I should have pretended like I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> but typically what happens is you end up with way more of a drip. If, if I was doing more than one and I kept going, what happens is when you use, um, containers like that, which there's nothing wrong with it, but it's just kind of annoying is you end up like dripping as you're going in between and then um, salve or bomb spills out and it gets under there wherever you're working at and you have to like fucking pry them off the table and clean it up and they're all waxy and oily. I really, really suggest the confectionery funnel if you're gonna make them on a regular basis. And then again, remember, if you are going to use um, a, a measuring cup, where the one goes that fill? Did we get it? Oh, it's over there. Um, you really want to use something that has more of a defined tip versus like a rolled tip. Um, it really, really makes a big difference. So I know I've been jabbering a lot and talking about all kinds of different things and been all over the place, but the reality is, let me break this down. You watched me put four cups of oil into a double boiler. And remember, you don't have to buy a double boiler. You can just find a pot that has a bowl that fits into it. You watch me put four cups of oil in that and three and a half cups of wax, a bunch of various stuff <laughs> that doesn't really matter. But really, it's just uh, oil, wax, heat, pour, you made a bomb. 
or you made a salve. And remember for the salve, it's two cups of wax per four cups of oil. Um, salves are arguably easier to like cut down and, and back up with your recipe because you um, don't have to do like half cup math. But here's the thing. Did you know online, and you know, Google is an amazing resource, um, you ever like go look at like a recipe online for like food and they ask you, like there's a thing where you put in you want like five servings or ten servings and it like doubles and triples the recipes for you? Um, those things, um, the generators are online for free. You don't have to like find it on somebody's website and you can just put in your recipe if you don't feel like doing like, uh, was that the hour mark? And is it cutting me off? Yay! We never know if Instagram will cut me off at an hour. Um, you don't have to like go to somebody's website to find that. Um, maybe I'll drop a link if you're watching on YouTube or something. Somewhere down there I might put in um, where you can find a recipe conversion thing. So if you're like, well, I want to make way less than four cups of balm or salve or I want to make like 27, <laughs> you can go in there and play around, you put in the amount, and then you ask how many servings it is, right? And it'll expand that for you if you don't want to do your math. Um, but it is really pretty easy because we're working with like even increments, really. You know, it's four to two, or well, three and a half isn't even, but you know what I mean. <laughs> um, so um, I tried, there it is. I tried to, um, let's see, let me find. I tried to make things go wrong. <laughs> like the other day I came down here and I made just a blank batch of like um, balm and salve. That's how I got the one that was heated to, I mean, one that didn't have enough wax and one that had too much. And for the life of me, I couldn't get things to fuck up. <laughs> um, and I don't know, oh, here they are. So, um, too much wax. Where's my cool too quickly one? I heat long enough. I don't know where those went to. I pushed everything out of the way. Huh. Something came and stole them from me. Okay, damn, I really wanted to show you guys that. Hmm, somewhere, I mean, I had them right on the table. Are they over here? Okay, I don't have visual aids. <laughs> um, I had one that showed how cool, how quickly it cooled. That is really gonna bug me. They're not in my pocket. They're not under here. Okay, so I'll just talk to you about it. Oh shit, it was right in front of my face. Oh, I was sitting on top of it, huh? Okay, so it was on it this way and I'm all, it's nowhere right there. Snake, it would have bit me, right? Okay, so um, you can kind of see it didn't work well. I had a hard time messing up what I was doing. <laughs> it was weird. I was like, this is harder than doing it right. Um, so you can kind of see, I don't know if you can kind of see how this has little dots in it. Um, when you cool your salve off or your balm off too quickly, what happens is like if you're like, oh, you know what? It's really cold out today and I'm, I'm wanting this to be done quickly. So I'll go put it out there or I'll crank the air conditioner on or I'll put a fan on it. What happens is your top layer of your salve or your balm, it, it cools um, first naturally, right? Because it has more air surface. But then what happens is underneath, like the waxes start bonding to themselves, right? Like imagine it's like, oh, there I am again. I can become the solid thing that I naturally want to be. And it starts getting up into the top there. So if you dig in, I can't dig in. If you dig in, um, you'll end up with like, <laughs> on the top, it'll be, I just spit on you. Did you see that? On the, <laughs> on the top, it will be more like a bomb and in the middle or the center or the bottom, it'll be more like a salve. Um, and if it's a salve, it'll be more like a bomb and underneath there won't be enough wax because what happens is it bonded to the top and it like stripped out the wax or butters from the underneath part. So you want to make sure that your, um, that you're letting your bombs or your salves cool naturally. Um, another thing that can happen is I should have filled one of these when I was doing a test thing. If your, um, if your tin is pretty thick and hefty, like this is like a three ounce tin, so it has a lot, and you put it in there and you cool it too fast, or even if you have too much wax, it'll happen with this too, um, your top will crack. Or have you ever made a salve or a bomb where the top sags? Right, like you make this and it should be like, almost grab one of these hot ones. Um, where the fuck? Okay, there we go. 
uh, it, oh, my hands are slippery. Okay, got it. And it should like like that on the top, but what it actually happens is it like concaves and it collapses, right? When it collapses, it, it was either cooled way too fast, and what happened was the same thing as last time, was the wax starts to accumulate on the top, but because it's heavier, because it's bigger, it has a chance to like collapse down in, right? But also, if you put too much wax, it's kind of like as it cools down, it separates and cracks. Typically, if it's too much wax, it'll just kind of like crack across the top. Like it looks like, um, again, like clay or like desert soil that's really dry. But if it's like cooled too fast, what happens is it sinks down in, right? Because again, it gets heavy on the top and it falls down in. Um, okay, so these are pretty, pretty warm still. <laughs> Not ready, so you'll notice how I did that. To test a salve or a bomb to see if it's ready to be capped, I put it on my hand. And if it's more than just barely lukewarm, I want you to resist the urge to put the cap on because um, what happens is it starts to condensate from the heat in there, right? And then you'll get kind of like water molecules and stuff. But look, I'm actually really excited. Um, something's going wrong. <laughs> Remember how I said you needed to let your uh, your bombs or your salves like heat for at least 10 or 15 minutes afterwards? Remember how we skipped that part just for the sake of making the video? Look at this. I can probably tip it, yeah. See if you can see that. You see all those white dots that are starting to show up? Can they see it in the video? Um, that is what's happening is the beeswax is all coming to the top now, right? And so it'll still be functional, but you start really getting that, but it'll do that if it cools too fast too. So I've had it happen to me on like a perfectly made bomb in here because I'll have like the air conditioner on because it's hot balls outside, right? And that top will get the little top, um, the little, um, the little like white dots in it, right? And I think it's easier to see in this excuse me, because it's black, right? Um, so, let's see, I better take a drink. I have a burp stuck. <laughs> um, I stopped looking at my board, so what, oh, so one thing to know is that, like, these last for about two years. However, if you were using something that you used fresh or wilted plant matter to make the herbal infused oil, or you say, whatever, I can add honey anyways, <laughs> or I can add a tincture or some type of liquid to it, and I'll just mix real well till it goes together, um, eventually bacteria is going to start grow. It's not a matter if it will, it's when it will. And sometimes that will cause it to go rancid. And so you can look out for smells and things like that. But if you haven't added anything that has any type of water properties to it at all, um, these last about two years. And then really the only thing that starts happening after that um, is that you're the the properties that you use from your plants, like the medicinal properties and things that we're after, start degrading. So it's not necessarily gone bad, it's just weaker. But if it starts to stink, it's gone rancid. Now it's hard for a balm to go rancid because it's so thick, but if you were making a salve and it like, um, oh geez, I don't know where, if you had not enough wax. If you made a salve and it looks like this, um, you know, where it's like really too thin and you decide to just roll with it anyways, it can go rancid and it's not that you did anything wrong, it's just that oil has a shelf life and there's oil in this and the less wax, the less, the more liquid form it's still in. Um, and then it can just, you'll know when it stinks unless you put essential oils in your stuff and it's not a good thing, don't promote that. Don't be like, well, I don't know that it's gone bad because it reeks like peppermint or tea tree or this or that and you might not be able to smell that it's gone rancid, which is, you know, one of like a million and one reasons that I don't use essential oils in anything I make. Um, but so I think that's about everything and that we can, oh, oh, wait, wait. I have something else I can show you. I'm gonna dump the oil out of that. So you made a bunch of salve or bomb and you have a bunch left over. That one isn't gonna work. Watch me spill some shit. Get yourself a mason jar. Pour your salve or your bomb into the mason jar. Please make sure that it's a mason jar, not a leftover spaghetti jar or something like that. Leave yourself about an inch or so of headroom. You're like, whoa, that's too big, right? That's too much <laughs> bomb. And um, what am I gonna do with that? I'm never gonna reach in there and get it. No, because what you can do, pretend that this is this already cooled down. And then I'm gonna take 
my cap off. Look at that cool. Look how it sagged because it was a big container. That's a good example of how it'll sag when it cools like that. Um, you take this and you pop it in your oven at 200 degrees. Not hotter, 200 degrees will do fine. And then, once it's in there for about an hour, it will turn back into a pourable bomb, right? Or a pourable salve. I do that all the time because I make these big batches and I'm like, all right, I didn't do my tin meth right and I've got like a half a gallon of salve left over and so I'll put it into a big mason jar and then when it comes time to start filling stuff again, I just gotta pop it in the oven and melt it down and then I can pour it again. Um, and I like the lower temps for that and I like for it to be heated for a few hours even if it's already melted because same thing, we want these waxes to fully incorporate into the oil again before we pour them. Um, so that is what you can do with your excess balm or salve because it's inevitable. It, you know, and even if you could do it on purpose, you're like, well, I I'm only gonna fill like five or six tins, but I want to make this size batch. And then instead of having to go and like remake it again, like over and over and like infuse all the herbal oils and do all this stuff, you can just pop varying jars in there of different sizes that you've saved and just enough to fill up, you know, 10 more tins. Um, and it stores really well that way. Um, it's the best way I have found to, um, to save all of the excess stuff. So I think I've covered a lot of stuff. Let's jump into um, you guys asking me questions. So he's gonna come here and we're gonna flip, shit, I can do it. Um, I'm gonna flip y'all around. Where the fuck is the flip button? There it is. Like my, like my board back there. Um, okay, all right, let me get you set up here. Oh my gosh, I can't get you close enough to really see. I should have brought in an extension cord. That's what I should have done. Okay, okay, all right. Um, so let me take that pinned comment off of there. Let me, oh, how the fuck do I remove a pinned comment? Don't know how I remove a pinned comment. But okay, 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 so let me get this close enough. Oh man, hold on, Can't. can you feed that through the hole it's supposed to go through? This is all professional, right? <laughs> um, okay, and now I've got a little cell phone stand here that I'm messing with. Uh, is it plugged back in? <laughs> this isn't tactful at all. Um, I think it's, I can't tell if it plugged back in. If not, my phone will die real fast. Okay, all right. Um, yeah, lip balm is the same recipe. You know what? <laughs> Roll that um, chair over there. And then I'm gonna put this up there. So bear with me, folks, bear with me. Um, okay, 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 okay. I'm going to, and then will you bring me my drink, sweetheart? Please and thank you. Okay, let me make this go up higher. Okay, <laughs> I'm trying to be, um, oh shit, I'm stuck. <gasps> I got my thumb, I got my thumb. It's, how the fuck did that happen? Okay, go back. <laughs> the chair was stuck under the table. Okay, okay, okay. I wanted to be able to actually like see you guys some. I needed to be closer to the, the to the questions. Um, all right. Okay. So the charcoal does not stain your skin. Uh, oh shit! I was trying to make that go up and I went down again. Oh. Okay. Let me sit on my knees so your words aren't across my face. Um. All right. Thank you, sweetheart. Love you. Um, is that my charger? Oh, I thought you just took my charger away. All right. Oh, there's an opening there. Okay, so I'm going to um, try to do these one at a time <laughs> and, and keep up. And if I miss your question, I'm going to try to scroll. So you can add CBD oil. Hey, Kent, grab me my big old thing of CBD oil out of there. In the fridge, big red, you know, the... The big ass thing. So when I make my hemp oil paint salve, I actually buy pre-made CBD oil. 
comes in a big jug like this. And what's really cool is because it's an oil, I can add it to an oil. And you can start doing your ratios of like, okay, well, I wanna make sure that there's X amount of milligrams per X amount of tin. And you just kind of say, well, there's this much. If I add this much and then I divide it by how many tins I've made, then you know how many milligrams of CBD um, pretty close are in your um, your balm or your salve. Um, okay, so how do I feel um, about making co using coconut oil? Yeah, you can use that. Um, it is softer. I would not necessarily um, use it as the predominant like thickener. Um, and you can use that if you're in the winter time, but in the summertime, you might go to like find your salve or your balm, and it's like completely melted off or you know melted down. But you can add a little bit to of it. I probably would keep it under like a 10% ratio, right? Like if you've got uh, fuck, this is not 10% math in my mind, but if you've got like four cups of oil, maybe only make like a half cup of that coconut oil. Um, okay, so let me see. So when it comes to um, using like herbs and stuff, like how do we infuse that to make it, definitely go check out my saved. Um, I have like a two hour long class on um, how to make it used herbal oils so there's so many answers there and definitely what you're gonna go want to go watch if you don't have any made yet before you start making bombs and salves um so let's see um why didn't you fill up the mason jar with the rest oh, oh with the rest of the bomb that's a good question so the reason that i left a good head like that and you know head space like that is because you want to know what sucks and I, I'll learn my lesson again and again when filling and say I filled that one up way too far these will be molten hot <laughs> when you take them out of the oven so if you fill it all the way to the top you're gonna be like <laughs> and it's gonna like spill over onto your hand and things like that so I like to give it a little bit of a gap but also did you know that um and this doesn't really necessarily play when um into a factor but it's just a good fact to know that when oil heats up it expands right and so there's a real possibility that it might spill over and then it'll be smoky all over so you really want to make sure that you leave a little bit of head space um let's see let's see let's see I'm scrolling through how much, uh, this person asked, how do you know how much shea or tallow to add in addition to the beeswax? It's really up to you. Um, I would say that if you're adding more than like one fourth cup to the recipe that I laid out, that you'll probably want to start reducing um, some of your waxes or increasing your oils, right? Because then it, as it solids up, it might be too thick of a bomb or your salve might turn more into a bomb. So really anything over one fourth cup addition, you really need to start um, adding it to it. And if it's something that goes a lot harder, um, like tallow is a lot softer than shea butter, arguably. So you could probably like um, with tallow, you get away with a little bit more before it hardens it too much. Um, let's see. I am scrolling through there. Um, are the butters to be included in the oil ratio? You can if you want. Again, it's it's right back to that. Like if you're adding um, more than one fourth cup, I would probably include it. Um, let's see. Would dried lemon or orange skins be good to scent oils for salves? Yeah, they're a really great option. And again, go check out my already like. Um, already did a class on like herbal oil infusions. I give all kinds of options there. Um, so I would not, oh, that's infused freeze oils or how long will infused oils? That's an infused oil question. Um, can soy wax be used? You can, but soy is really toxic. Um, and there's a lot of like studies out there that say like, like even soy candles and stuff like burning those in your house is really toxic for you. So I'd probably argue that when you're making the salve or the bomb, it's probably putting out the same toxic fumes. Um, you know, sweetheart, if you want to go up to the house, you can... And so you don't have to just stand there. I took his chair. I totally stole his chair. <laughs> um, so let's see. I don't use any wax besides beeswax. They asked about, oh, I'm supposed to be reading these questions out loud. Um, somebody says, is the wax ratio different when using candelia wax? But I only use beeswax. Um, okay, so I think I'm going to scroll way down. Okay, let's see. Let's see. Um, 
Can you add, so somebody asked, can you add the leftovers once heated in the oven and brought to a liquid state? For example, can I add CBD once liquefied? Yeah, if you had a salve already and you wanted to add more CBD to it or add some CBD to, CBD to it, you could definitely do that. Um, you can also um, add it to like if you're sometimes I'm making like um, hemp oil paint salve or something like that or just you know and I've got a big batch but I've got like a half gallon left over and so I'll melt that half gallon down and I'll add that to the batch that I already made so it's just one big batch you can add them back together as long as the same ratios and stuff like that um let's see um is melted beeswax the same measurement um, as your beaded beeswax. I did buy big old blocks of wax. Oh man, that's a hard one. I really don't recommend buying wax and blocks unless you're making candles <laughs> um, because it, it won't be the same. You would have to um, maybe buy some pelleted beeswax weigh it, figure out how much, like three and a half cups or how much it weighs like that, and then shave off, cut off enough that it is um, the same measurement weight. So that's probably the really the only way that you could figure it out. Or melt down the wax and see how much of it is in liquid state, and then measure that out. But I feel like you'd over melt more than you needed. So really, um, I, I personally just don't suggest um, buying um, beeswax in the block. In fact, um, we started keeping bees last year. We've got about four hives. Um, they, they just kind of kept coming. We kept catching wild swarms. Um, and... Um, we're looking into how to pellet it because it's so hard for me to use um, like the block wax realistically with what I do. Um, let's see. I buy my bulk CBD oil from Bluebird Botanical. You have to go through a process to buy it in that bulk amount and like like get certified to be able to buy it because I don't want people making like medical claims and things with their product. Um... Is there anything that stands out as not working well in balms or salves? Uh, that brings me back to the things that we can't add. Um, I don't care what somebody tells you. Honey will not incorporate well when it's fresh. You can use powdered honey, but you can't use like liquid honey. You can't add tinctures. You can't use glycerin, even though it seems like an oil. Um, you can't just kind of... And, and you might be able to beat it or whip it long enough to feel like it's incorporated, but it really hasn't. It will cause bacterial growth. It will make your oils and everything go rancid. Um... I would not add essential oils to a balm because I really, really don't promote the use of essential oils. Um, you can go to wildwoodapothecary.org or follow the link in my bio if you're watching um, on Instagram to go to a whole article of why I don't use essential oils. Um, so, let's see. So... Yeah, you can use cocoa butter in lieu of beeswax, especially if you're vegan and you're and you're trying to stay away from beeswax, but you should probably expect for that. Um, what happens with cocoa butter over time is it seems really nice, right? It's a really nice texture, but if you've ever had cocoa butter for any real amount of time and where you like left it and it like went through temperature changes, what happens is it gets really gritty and it really sucks. So it'll be like really smooth at first. I did that because she was talking about using a deodorant. <laughs> I love that the people that are re-watching this don't get to see the comments that I'm responding to. They just saw me do an armpit gesture for no reason. So if you made a deodorant out of like cocoa butter, even happens with shea butter, um, it just starts to go grainy and gritty as it ages. So it's really only going to be good for like anywhere between like mm, three to five months. And after that, it starts to just really kind of like grain out on you. And you have to like reheat it again to make it go uh, silky or smooth again. Um... So, um, somebody said that they use a crock pot on low or warm setting to make their salve instead of double boiler, um, and that they turned out well. Um, you could do that. I would, I would say the only reason that I wouldn't is that, um, you would, well, you would want to maybe dedicate a crock pot to that. You wouldn't want to necessarily use it for something that you were cooking for, even though most of the things that we're using are edible, it can, like, put off taste into your food or vice versa because a lot of people don't realize that um like the enamel type stuff that's on there it ends up being porous right and eventually you're like this crock pot smells like chili even though I haven't right you get that smell in there it's not because you haven't washed it well enough it's just that it gets stuck in there so my main concern would be 
something can get into your food, like maybe an herb you use that isn't meant to be um, ingested, or you end up with like a chili scented balm <laughs> or something like that. So if you're going to go that way, I would like just buy a little cheap crock pot um, and use it like um, only for that, like label it, you know, like when people make like soap with crock pots, it's important that you only make soap with it. So just pop a label on it so nobody else uses it. Um, so let's see. Um, hey April, I have strained in summer herbal oil that I used for a batch before Xmas. Can I use that oil again or will it go bad quicker? Um, yeah, you use that oil to make your bombs and salves. Are, are you meaning you want to infuse it again? Um, no, I, um, all of the bombs and salves and butters and everything I make are made with herbal infused oils and then I turn that into my bomb or my salve. Um, okay. Uh, video keeps freezing. Is it still freezing for everybody else? I think it's still here. There's still quite a few people watching. And usually when it freezes really bad, people completely drop off. Um, okay, so what else do we have here? Jars can explode when there isn't enough um, headroom. Well, that, and that's in regards of why I put stuff in there. An important thing to make sure if you're reheating your salves or bombs in the oven after you've stored it, take your jar off. Don't leave your jar on because it will, it can, you know, it can cause pressure issues like that. You can, um, before you take it out, if you want to reduce spillage, you can carefully put the lid on right? That's not going to cause an issue, but take it off before you put it in the oven. Um, so let's see. Yeah, this will be saved. I'll, um, I'll definitely have it put on my, um, my YouTube, saved on my Instagram wall, all that kind of stuff. Um, Shea butter and that stuff crystallizes when it cools because it's just the way, um, well, when it gets old, it's just, it's the way the particles start to separate from each other because it doesn't, like, exist naturally, right? Like, beeswax exists naturally, so it naturally wants to be that. But shea butter or cocoa butter or mango butter, all these things have had to go, go through various types of processing to create them. So, essentially, it just begins to separate back down because it doesn't want to be in that state naturally. Um, I hate olive oil <laughs> that seems like a random fat a random statement to people who are re-watching this but somebody said i've heard olive oil is best for making something medicinal do you ever use olive oil i actually really hate olive oil and i would really argue with that any that any oil doesn't really um the oil doesn't make something medicinal it's the herbs you um, infuse into it and 99 percent of the olive oil that you buy in america if you're in america is adulterated it's usually got rapeseed oil in it or safflower oil it's cut it's also rancid and i really don't like olive oil for making oil infusions and i talk a lot about this on my um how to make herbal infused oils video that you can go rewatch. it was like a class just like this one um it has a lot of protein in it from when they press the olives right and so by proxy it um it goes rancid a lot quicker i really don't like it it also does not absorb into skin very quickly so it's just like out of all the oils i don't like olive oil i've it's ruined so many things for me over the years i really love avocado oil there's all different types of oils but like i just i don't like olive oil um so um let's see um let me just keep oh no i didn't mean to do that doing weird shit on here um is tallow butter that you can use so tallow um is the fat that's been rendered from a red meat animal and we're red meat animals as so people don't like to think of that but it's the same fat that we produce but it's not something that i would use in lieu of beeswax because it's not really it doesn't even like it can like harden up but it doesn't stay that way it really it will go from soft to hard in a day depending on the temperature in your house it is a good option to add to your salves or bombs but not the sole thing that i would um, rely on for thickening um let's see let me see let me see uh oh it scrolled way back down let me oh my gosh sorry i'm trying to roll through these let me go way down oh my god um uh, let's see what do you think about polysaturated fatty acidic oils it's really controversial. Um, on your skin, they've been proven to be pretty great. Internally, they're not super great for your body. But I stay away from like canola oil and all that type of stuff. Um, that's why I like avocado oil. It's one of the healthy, like okay fats. It's not the same as like, you know, like vegetable oil or anything like that. Um, so you can use any, um, 
you can use any type of like uh, somebody asked what type of like shea butters or how to know when to add those anything that's meant to be incorporated with oil you can use and really it's just a matter about uh, experimenting and deciding what you like what works best for the formula that you're trying to make um, so let's see um, let's see somebody asked if I'll ever have a class on business and regulations um, I can I, I will say that it won't be the end all be all when it comes down to being FDA um, compliance um, our CGMP there's like a lot of like uh, like I could get you started but like you would have like unique stuff that's for your situation especially because we're supposed to make our all of our own SOPs which is standard operating procedures so like nobody can make that for you because you're the one that does the things how you do them right um, okay so um, somebody asked if we should purchase oil in glass containers and not plastic. It really depends. There's a plastic isn't great for our environment, but it's also arguably less environmental of an impact if you start buying like a lot of glass bottles because glass does have an environmental impact. We just think that it's not plastic, so it's fine to use, but it uses a lot of electricity um, and a lot of water and things like that. Um, it seems like an oxymoron that it uses water, but it does. Um, and so. So it's really, really um, controversial if you jump into it. Um, but it wouldn't, for me personally, because I use a lot of oil, I can't go out and like, like I did for a while, but we ended up with like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of glass bottles. Um, and there are types of glass they don't like you recycling. It's crazy. Um, yeah, this will be saved on my IG. Um, so let me scroll up to find more questions. Um, any possible allergic reactions to avocado oil or beeswax is a question that somebody just asked me. Yeah, there are definitely people that are allergic to avocado and I've never heard of anybody being allergic to beeswax, but people can be allergic to anything. But when it comes down to it, um, if you're going to be selling these things, like I don't tell people my exact ingredients and as far as like what herbs are infused and well, you buy it, you get it because people recipe steal all the time. But you know, if you have an allergy, you can ask me. So you need to have a policy where you'll tell people if they're like, hey, I'm allergic to this. You're like, yeah, this is in this, 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 and this. But I always say that I use beeswax and avocado oil because you need to let people know the oil you're using up front because they could be allergic to it. Um, let's see. Let's see, I'm scrolling up. Can you dehydrate food and turn to powder and add that to a balm or salve? That's a good question. You really can. <laughs> yeah, you can because it's the same process of if you were making like an infused oil. I would say if I was going to do that, I would probably take that powder or that dehydrated food because a powder would be kind of hard to get out if you were wanting to get it out. And I would actually make that into my herbal infused oil because arguably you're going to need the cellular structure of that like plant matter or food matter that you're using if it's like a berry or something like that. You're going to want that to break down long enough that the oil can extract the properties that you're after. Like if you're using strawberries, right? They have a lot of ascorbic acid in them, but you need to break down the cellular structure to access that. So adding it to the balm or salve isn't horrible and wouldn't hurt anything. I just don't know that it would have as much of an action that you'd want it to compared to if you infused it into the oil and then use the oil to make your balm or your salve. Um, let's see. Let me see. I'm trying to scroll up. I'm, I'm touching my screen and um, <laughs> let's see. Lanolin from sheep. Somebody asked, what about using lanolin from sheep? Yeah, I've done that before. Um, I've even made it into like, um, like a, a body butter or something like that. Something specifically for breastfeeding or things like that. Um, it is a good option and it does, it does have a lot more, I wouldn't say water content, but it's a lot oilier, right? Like, you know, that it never really goes thick. So I wouldn't count it ever as any of your thickening waxes. I'd arguably maybe even like up my wax ratio by like a little bit, just a little bit, just play around with it. Um, to see if it made it like a lot softer than you wanted it to. Um, okay. I'm just trying to keep scrolling oh it may it took away my recent stuff okay so buffalo tallow um somebody asked if they could use that tallow is um just the fat from any red meat animal so you can use buffalo you can use goat you can use deer you can use cow you could use yak anything like that um 
So let me scroll back up. Um, what would be the difference between powdered food to um, using cayenne to the salve or the balm? There wouldn't be a difference. It's the same thing because cayenne pepper is a food. And like I said, when I showed you that I was adding it, usually I don't just add it. I like to, um, I like to actually infuse it into the oil. But cayenne is a bit different than, again, let's say a strawberry because she's got capsaicin in her. And that is like directly active. You're not trying to really necessarily need to break anything down to get access to that. I just like using it as um, an oil infusion and then turning it into a balm because I feel like once it's infused into like let's say your salve because I make a hemp oil pain salve I want it to soak in what will happen is it'll get pulled further in than versus just the powder because it's in the oil right and that's what soaks into your skin um okay let's see what um Adding propolis, you know, somebody asked if they could add propolis, and for those of you who don't know, propolis is the um, basically like a like a pitchy substance that bees make to glue their hives together, right? And she's really amazing. She's antibacterial. Um, I would try infusing it into oil versus just adding it to the balm or the salve because it, it's probably going to be a lot like pine pitch because it's resinous. Um, it would need time to break down and actually like get into there. I'd even argue that if you powdered it and put it in there, it probably still wouldn't be as good because it needs to break down um some people somebody asked would salves work for the hair and dandruff you know um you could probably work a salve and you could work it in I would probably make remember the one I showed earlier in the video where it was like two um to like gel something like that would probably work better because you'd have a hard time getting it really to work in and then you're likely to have um I don't know, it'd be harder to get out. The beeswax kind of tends to make knots, right? Like when beeswax is in your hair, it, it puts a coat over it and it'll like stick really bad. So I don't really know how well that would work. Um, okay, so somebody asked if I will be doing a cream class in the future. I've been getting asked that a lot. Um, I will, but it, again, it's gonna be a more technical class like this one where I'm showing you the process and I talk about how to figure out your own formula. Um, and I bring that up because a lot of people are like, I wanna know your recipe. <laughs> and I'm like, well, that was my own recipe that I formulated and took a lot of years to like perfect. So I won't be giving that out on a cream class, but I will show you how to make your own and how that works. Um, okay, let me, I, it's only show me like, oh, it took all my comments away. I didn't hide my comments, but I only see one from my awesome admin, Sarah. So I think I've answered a lot of questions though. Um, so, and I, I really think that I've covered most things. You know, if there's a question that I see that I didn't answer that's related to it, um, to the class, I'll probably answer it in the comment section below. What I really wish is that when I would get done with these videos, that IGTV, or Instagram would throw the comments under there. Um, so I can share, um, I used to get myself, I, I, I just, but okay, somebody asked me, okay, <laughs> stumbled over myself there. Somebody asked if I would share the supplier that I buy my tins off of. Right now I'm buying them from some in bulk which means that you'd have to buy like 3,000 or more so I won't put that out there because it's just not realistic for most people and if you're that big you gotta do your own research <laughs> but if you're just getting started off where I used to buy from a specialty bottle but right now they're only accepting orders from um, people that um, have been pre-existing customers because of you know all the things that are going on right now but you could check out um, SKS bottle or bulk apothecary um, anywhere that sells bulk you'll want to find somewhere that if you want to buy more they give you a discount per the amount you order um, and then other places will have um, MOQs which are minimum order quantities and those are for when you get a little bit bigger they're you know saying things like you have to buy at least 3,000 before we'll sell them to you things like that um, I wish it would let me scroll up it just won't let me see any more of my comments only just one um, but again I think I covered a lot of your questions here I think I did all right <laughs> um, and I'm really enjoying these classes my next class I think I'm gonna do um, somebody asked me if I could do just an herbal infusion for like drinking like nourishing herbal infusions like what I've been drinking all day today um, so I think I'm gonna do that one next, probably in a probably in a week or maybe two weeks or so, but probably a week. That one's a pretty easy one for me. We can just hang out in my kitchen and do that one. Um, so yeah, I don't know, my, uh, my question thing just disappeared. So I guess that's the universe being like, you've been on here long enough. So I'm really grateful that you were here with me watching this. And out of all the things that I've jabbered about that I want you to know is that you are 
absolutely smart enough to do this and you don't need to pay somebody to teach you how to make a bomb or a salve. You really don't. You just have to use your own curiosity, get out there and trust that you're capable because you are. Um, if you're re-watching this and you're watching me on Instagram, come find me on YouTube. If you're watching me on YouTube or Facebook or wherever, come find me on Instagram. I'm on all of those places. I share all kinds of different information all back and forth. Um, make sure that you like, comment, subscribe, share. Sharing is important. If you get done watching this, share my video once it uploads because it really helps other people learn and remember that they are smart enough to do this too. And it's so easy. You can do this. You can totally melt some waxes down in some oil. You can do this, okay? So thank you so much for watching everybody and I will see you next time. Bye.